once again, I extend my warmest welcome to each and every one of you. May the summer course program be a fruitful and rewarding journey for all. Um, I guess this moment is starting point to uh, expand not only the summer courses to, to network between others, between the students, but also between institutions. We can expand the existing uh, programs through the uh, research or other uh, courses and programs that we can do together. Southeast Asia at the center of the power rivalry. Why? Southeast Asia has a strategic position in the power competition between China and the US. It is at the center of the Indo-Pacific and at the crossroad of free and open Indo-Pacific and BRI. Again, with this uh, global, regional, national, local agenda, it still needs collaboration from many actors, maybe even parliament. But then, as we know, parliament is just like to go for the going abroad, but not really coming from there. What is some kind of you know souvenir? They souvenir of idea what they can bring to to to, to the, their national parliament, for example. So this also including this trustworthy cleric. If the cleric is trustworthy, why not in, in also in, include them? But then it's also, you know, there is an effort to make this collaboration work together and, you know, orchestrating this to work and implement it truly. You know, Indo-Pacific had been highly dominated by state, it's so state-centric, right? Almost there is no space for uh, people's voices, no spaces for uh, young generations to speak up. What are their visions of, of Indo-Pacific? Okay, again, uh, come back to Indonesian proverb, we don't want to be the little creatures that be the victim of the uh, major, major powers conflict in, uh, in the region. How the Dutch come here? Yeah. It is uh, just only uh, for economic interesting, economic uh, capitalism interesting or, or others. And historically, I, I said, the Dutch come here is not only the for economical uh, interesting, but they have uh, the new missions. How they connect between the Asian with the Dutch, with the Western. We know that uh, our government try to choose the location in the center of Indonesia, the center of Indonesia. Uh, because East Kalimantan is located in the center of the, uh, the of the Indonesia, and then another reason also because there is a land enough land to build a new building for the ministry for the uh, facilities urban facilities and how to develop infrastructure to support it, the new capital cities, capital cities as well. Yeah. At the 23rd ASEAN Korea the Summit, and it, the vision is the free and the peaceful and the prosperous in the Pacific. And the, the, it's quite different to the previous New South policy because the New South policy was focusing on the people and the peace and the prosperity prosperities and there are three main principles the inclusive uh, inclusiveness and the trust and the list southeast asian countries were characterized as largest exporters of quality students to developed countries but as i said um 20 years ago um the, we, we saw this great advancement of the level of higher education in more advanced asian countries right and they were aiming to transfer their status from sending country to receiving country. They wanted to receive international students. High tech, uh, well, military technical cooperation, which is in a way currently limited by sanctions, but still is important. I would say food, uh, tourism, which is restoring after COVID, medicine cooperation, enabled by this mentioned COVID pandemic. Well, and education to make this uh, all these sectors uh, develop 
and, and grow. It is, it should be grounded in decolonial practices of knowledge construction and of knowledge circulation to overcome all kinds of intellectual imperialism and academic dependency that is still very influential, very crucial in many academic contexts. So I think these approaches to collaborate and to do things together. Crime argue that TEC challenges state sovereignty with regard to controlling state's borders. TEC criminal networks effectively create a shadow state through the implementation of shadow economy. So that's another academic concept, shadow state, shadow economy. In short, TEC threatens legitimate companies and legitimate economies of the state and undermines a different trend uh, during the COVID and after COVID-19 is uh, the trade dispute and COVID-19 pandemic, they reshape the economy in Indo uh, Pacific region. We can say this is a kind of a real, real uh, a kind of re regionalizations is become the the region itself is play more and more uh, important role. Uh, for everything, this policy is focused more on first is called two way. Two way is mean uh, uh, two side. So inward, uh, outward is mean from Taiwan to Southeast Asia, and also inward is mean from Southeast Asia to Taiwan. So this is emphasis on two way. I also this because of this concept, that's why I have this uh, empirical study that I uh, measure uh, uh, the bilateral collaboration. It's mean... As a, uh, 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 what is it, a linguistic term, but rather a, a, a civilization term. Jadi Nusantara sudah ada sebelum ada istilah Nusantara lagi. Eh? We were here before there was that term, right? Uh, Malaysia was here before there is Malaysia. Indonesia was here before Indonesia. Uh, like other countries, before the world came, we were already here. Now, the the, the part that I want to emphasize by Nusantara is that we are a very old civilization. Right? How did in the ASEAN reacted or responded? As you know, those who've been studying about ASEAN and those who've been following the dynamics of ASEAN as uh, as an organization, um, therefore, we have to stick with some of the basic um, basic architectures of the organization to handle internal crisis. However, uh, this word often has a more negative impression, such as merit fraud, dark, stupid, and uneducated. Okay, that is that is my. My, my understanding and my, based on my observation and also interviews with local Taiwanese, both in Taiwan and Australia as well. Okay, this is one of uh, this is my one of my students in 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 in, 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 in Taipei. Uh, she explains those two terms uh, in our class introduction to postcolonial studies uh, last semester. Not it makes me. Uh, tired and nervous to prepare because it combined two papers recently I'm going to to write but I think it would be interesting to talk about Islam in Taiwan and the Chinese folk religion in Indonesia because we can compare